All right, guys, so now we are finally to the meat and potatoes of everything. Everything that we've covered so far is extremely important. It's really good to know, and it goes a long ways towards you being able to know how to get a bird in the future. But now we're to the good stuff. Right. Now we've got our location. We've figured out how we're hunting it, you know, as far as like uh, terrain and natural barriers and things like that. Now we need to dive right in and actually go on our hunt. And the number one first starting point, in my opinion, is roosting the bird. If you're going to try and hunt that bird in the morning, it's great to know right off the bat where you're staying so you can get started off right. So how do we roost a bird? Yeah, I think it's vital if you could do it. If you could pull it off, it's awesome. So one of the strategies that we like to use is if we are if we have access to a piece of property that has a field and we've pinpointed birds early evening, watching their behavior from a distance, you know, glassing on them, you know, using those binoculars and, and try and determine their behavior where they're heading across the field. And at that point, you know, typically like that 45 minutes before dark, you really want to pay close attention. Um, they're going to be flying up, you know, they're going to be roosting. And so as you're observing the birds and pinpointing where they're roosting, it's pretty important too to begin looking at the layout of the land. You know, if there's high points, if there's dips, if there's um, a, a brush pile, anything around that field edge or whatever you're hunting, to mentally prepare and have a visual of where to set up that next morning. So if you're going to be using a blind, you want to know how you're going to sneak that blind in there without bumping those birds mm -hmm. off that roost. Yeah. So. Yeah, and so as far as their fly up time, you know, it'll vary a little bit from day to day, yep. but under normal weather conditions, typically, you know, they'll fly up about 20 to 30 minutes before it actually gets dark. Right. So if you get there too late, you're not even going to realize it. You know, sometimes we'll be out roosting a field and we'll be watching the birds and it'll get down to that last 20, 30 minutes and they'll actually walk into the woods first and then fly up. You know, you may hear them fly up. You may hear a gobble once they hit the tree limb or something like that uh, to tip you off on them being there. But at least, you know, at that point, if you're down to 20 minutes before dark and they've walked into the woods and now you can't see them anymore, they're probably going to be roosted within about 100 yards of where you saw them hit the woods. Yeah, and if it's calm out and there's not much wind, you can hear that fly up from a long distance. Mm -hmm. It's pretty loud and noisy. You know, their wings are actually hitting limbs and all kinds of different stuff. Yeah. Now, in certain weather conditions, if you've got a lot of rain or there's a storm approaching or something like that, they can hit the, the trees even sooner. You know, so I would always recommend... If you can, try and get to the field about an hour before dark, you know, just to make sure that you're there and ready to go because you don't know what kind of circumstance you're going to encounter and you want to make sure that you're there to learn that info. You know, another big tip too would be, like we said in the previous section, is if you've got elevation, if you've got spots where there's hills and stuff and you can get up, you can do all this from up above and be able to see multiple fields at once, which allows you to, you know, really increase your odds of seeing the birds fly up. Right. So let's say that you're pulling up to a property and you're going to be hunting the next morning, but you've missed that initial fly up. So you don't know where they're at and they're quiet. They're sitting up there and it's not too much after dark. I mean, what, what's something we can do? I mean, well, at that point, then you really want to bring those locator calls with you. Um, once the birds have flew up, there's going to be a period of time for, oh, about typically about half an hour to 45 mm -hmm. minutes. Once they hit that branch, that for whatever reason, they're susceptible again to locator calls. Now, throughout most of the evening and afternoon, they may not even respond at all if you'd throw out, say, a crow call or something. They're tight-lipped at that point. But they hit that branch, and for some reason, they get back into that kind of easy-to-spook mode. Say you're running late, you get to the, the field, and they've already flew up. You know that they're there somewhere, and you don't have a way to pinpoint it visually you can try and do it audibly. So that's when you're gonna break out your calls, you know, like a owl hoot or, you know, like a coyote call, anything that's gonna sound natural to that area, but it's really sudden and loud. Right. And you just, you know, hit that and listen, hit it again, listen. Sometimes it's good if you got pairs, the call can be so loud that you're using, it could be good to have somebody else sitting about 20, 30 yards in front of you so they can listen towards the turkeys and have your call coming from behind you. So get out there, you know, Hit that call. If you don't hear anything after a couple times, either they're there and they're not going to respond or they're not there. In that case, move on to your next site. You know, keep going. See if you can get one of those birds to respond back. And either way you do it, you know, whether it's using a locator call or if you're visually watching them fly up, the main point is just to try and figure out where they're at through the night so you know how to start off in the morning.